Stuart, how difficult a circumstance is this in which to, to step into the role? Yeah, it's it, it's a big challenge. It's a big challenge for everybody at the football club. For me personally, I'm trying to take that side of it out. Um, I like to go back on past experiences, and I've done this before. You know, I've stepped in when times have been hard, and a football club's been at the bottom end of a table. So I know what it feels like. I know how um, how the place feels, how the football club feels. Um, I'm a little bit against this false energy. You know, this idea of you know a manager's out the door. Me personally, I'm hurting about that because it was somebody that showed a trust in me when I've been out the game for a for a long period of time. So that's sore for me. Um, but what we do have to do is, and what we owe this football club is, we have to pick ourselves up. And I know that Stephen would want that. I know that he would want us to try and uh, move in the right direction, even if that's just for a couple of days until we can get some st some sort of stability and try and move the football club in the right direction. How do you personally sort of set aside that feeling of almost guilt of stepping into the role and off the back of Stephen losing his role and focus on the, on the task in hand? Yeah, again, it has to be that professional side mark it has to be that you know I've been asked to do a job I've accepted that job you know whether I've seen it coming whether you wanted the scenario I've accepted that if I didn't think I could do that and get some form of reaction I, I would have told the football club no genuinely I think I'm I think I'm a pretty honest guy um, but you know see a group of players that are hurting I've been in this position as a player and as a coach and as a manager so you get a sense of what it takes to try and get one result and that's kind of what I'm looking at in my own mind and I've said this to the players that it's three days it's three days and that's all it is you know the message for the football club that we had a midweek game you know I've been asked the question is that what, what scenario do you want do you want a game right away do you want a game at the weekend how would you rather that looked this is what we've got so we have to try and do as best we possibly can in the next two days. But, you know, we had a session yesterday, we got everybody together, we had a pretty open and honest conversation. My message was put across clear. We we'll go back in the pitch today and we prepare and we organise for what's going to be a difficult game against St Man. Let's not kid ourselves. We know how good they are and how well they function and they're full of confidence, but we have to try and turn the tides a little bit. What have you tried to prioritise then in the very short time you've had just to be as clear as I possibly can. Um, I've never sat with an opinion. Um, you know, I've been doing a bit of media work and I watch a lot of games and I watch a, you know, a lot of different teams, but I've not sat here with an opinion on players. I've not sat here with an opinion on styles of play or shapes or anything like that. So I've tried to come in with a clear head of this is a group of players that's in front of me. I know them because I've watched them. You know, I don't know them personally, most of them. Um, and I've just tried to think how I can potentially simplify it and get that message across in a short space of time. I think if we try and get too much information and, and, and too much detail in that short space of time, then I think that that can kind of muddy the water, so to speak. Um, so for me, it's given a real clarity of this is what I need for the next three days. My job personally is to pick a team which I'll do today, I know my living, I know who's going to play in the game tomorrow. The players will know that probably within the next hour or so, um, and we'll go to work on it on the pitch and try and see if we can we can have some form of impact. And I need to go on record as well, all that work was done before. You know, I hate when managers or interim guys come in and say, oh, I'm going to change this, I'm going to do something different. No, my job is to see if I can get a reaction, maybe by having a different voice, by maybe asking one or two slightly different aspects of the game, whether that's a change of shape or however that might fall. Um, but the work that the guy's done before me was very good. You know, I've been in the game long enough to see that good information comes across and that they're good people. I see their work ethic. So that doesn't change. That doesn't change. I need to bring all of that and I need to see if there's one or two factors that I can tweak and change and maybe poke and prod one or two just to get a, uh, a, another 20-30% out of them. Final question for me, just in terms of the remit you've been given, what have you been asked to do and, and who has given you that remit? Because obviously there's a sort of set, state of flux at the moment with the Chief Executive. Yeah, I, I, I've spoken to the Chairman, um, I've spoken to members of the Board, that's that's the, the guys that have asked me to do this job. Um, I understand that people will be asking questions because we all know that there's a imminent change in the in, in the background of the football club and the structure of the football club that has come as a football club decision um, you know so it might come across again as a diplomatic answer but it's the honest answer that's that, that's how it's came about how do you see itself is this a job that you would be interested in taking have you even has that even crossed your mind are you just focused on Wednesday how, how does it come across for you again one that I kind of laugh at and not, not a uh, dismiss your question I, I do laugh at it I laugh at it in a sense that I've heard all kinds of answers in this situation, people trying to bat it away. I'll give you the brutally honest answer. 
if the football club thought I was the right fit for this job and they thought I was the right guy for this job, then I would certainly take it into consideration. Um, see if they don't. I had a role here, I come in with a job of developing young players, so that was the job I came in to take, fully focused on, fully intent and trying to do it for a period of time and get success. I'm not trying to be arrogant in any way, I like to think that my CV shows that that development side has been a big part of my uh, my makeup as a coach and as a manager, you know, even at first team level I felt it was um, pretty successful in developing players and with that came a degree of success. But if the board and if the chairman don't feel that I was the right fit for it, they want to look at someone else, then that's fine. I'm not pitching myself forward for this job. Um, I'm not about being a salesman and trying to audition for anything. I think they'll know me as a, as a guy. They'll know how I work, if that's something that, that connects with the, with the board. Because you have to be specific with this as well. Let's not forget, it's not just a generic come in and just throw somebody in and do a job. It has to be what the club want for their culture and how they want to try and move the football club forward. And as I say, if I fit with that, it might be something I would consider. If it doesn't, then there is no there's no ill feeling in any way, shape or form. You're talking about your experience, you've been in these situations before, player, as a coach, as a manager. How does the situation compare to previous ones you've been in? How are the players? Are they more down than other times you've picked teams up that are scrapping at the bottom? Are they, or are they, are they still positive out there? How do they feel? No, I think... Um, I think very similar in many ways, you know, um, we always lean to, a big, a big problem we have here at the football club is injuries, um, I'm, I'm not trying to uh, make any excuses for the, the previous manager, I think he will have sat here and told you guys the same thing, if you go out and recruit players and you have decent players in your, in your squad and you look at the numbers, the amount of guys we've got in the treatment room and the quality of player in a different dimension that I feel that they can bring to that starting the living. I'm sitting here with the same problems that the, the previous manager, Stevie, had. Um, and that's not went away. You know, that those problems are going to sit there for a period of time. So um, in terms of the squad, we're missing a number that could help us. Um, but the mood and everything like that, it's similar. There's, there, there's people that are, that are sore because they're disappointed to let someone down. Um, but also, we have to get them to take responsibility for this situation. And by doing that, that's the only way you can move forward. If you want to sit back and point the finger at somebody else or point the finger at you're not quite happy with what's happening in training or your game time or whatever, we just need good teammates. We need good people. Everything everything about this situation comes down to people. If you've got good people in your corner, you've got a chance. If you don't, with a bad attitude, we'll never get anywhere. You've been very complimentary about the previous manager, so I'm not expecting you to criticise him, but quite clearly things haven't been going well. What areas have you identified that even in a short space of time you think you can improve on? Listen, there's aspects from you know set plays and, and things like that. Stevie's done a terrific job, in my opinion, with the work he's, he's done here. I know the results didn't go the way that he or anybody wanted it to go. The guy's a legend of this, this football club, let's not forget that. Um, but, you know, you look at the goals you can see, I'm, I'm thinking about second phase and, um, and set plays, those types of things. So we have to go and focus on that again. I can only give the information, I can only put the demands on the players, no trying to pass this away from me, but they have to make better decisions. I'll speak about emotional intelligence. So what do you do in the game, both in possession and out of possession? How do you make better decisions? How can I maybe simplify it for certain people to give them two, three, four instructions to make sure that they get those two or three, four instructions correct? So that's again, maybe how I'm trying to break it down. I want to try and give us a threat at the, the front end of the park. You know, I look at Kevin Van Veen's Goal scoring record has been good. How do we try and pitch in from other areas and how do we become a threat in, in, in other aspects that maybe we haven't quite capitalised on to this stage? Again, I know I'm running through a, a few different areas, but I'm trying to pinpoint that three or four that I, can, I think can be a short-term fix because we're not going to get a long-term fix here. We need to just target two, three aspects that can give us that short-term fix. Stuart, you said there that um, you've had an open and honest conversation with the players. I just want to know how difficult a conversation that was and how that was received by the players. No, again, um, really, really easy. I'm not trying to put, pitch myself in front of anybody else. I can only indicate to you guys how I act and how I respond. I, I, it was a simple uh, question of, or it was a simple conversation of, this is how I intend to work for the next three days. This is what I'm going to do. You guys will feel, and rightfully so, that you've let the previous manager down. You need, to, you need to own that. You need to take responsibility for that. But this is what I'm doing. You're either coming with me or you're not. Um, if you're not coming with me and you don't want to respond to what I'm asking you, then tell me now and, and you won't be a part of that. Here, whilst I'm in charge, which is fine, I'll respect them for their honesty. 
And as you guys know, there's nobody's put their hand up and nobody said that that's the situation. Everybody wants to come forward and try and do the best for this football club. So um, I take that as gospel now. You've you've looked me in the eye, you've looked in the whites of the eye and we've said to each and every one of them that that's how the situation is going to be. So when it comes to game, I, ex I, I accept mistakes because we deal with human beings. We're not dealing with robots here. But I want honest mistakes and I want to see a reaction when we do make that mistake in the game. And I want to see a personality if that mistake comes in the game. And that's that, that that's as simple as the breakdown's been. And in your experience, this kind of upfront, direct approach to the players is what you think can get the club out of the situation? I think so, yeah. Because I think if we break up into our companies of twos and threes and, you know, maybe not quite happy with what's been said elsewhere and want to form our own opinion and uh, question decisions that are made, then we're, we're never going to join the dots. So we have to try and join the dots and make sure that, as I say, even if it's for three days, that's that's what we're doing. We're working towards St Mirren on Wednesday night, which, as I've said, is going to be a difficult game. For us to compete against St Mirren, we're going to have to have 11 to 18, 20 players, including the guys that are on the bench, we're going to have to have every single one of them unified. And again, I'll go back to it, if you don't do that, or I'm not able to achieve that in the short term, then it'll be exceptionally difficult to, to compete with St Man because their work ethic, uh, their organisation, their togetherness, for me, has got them into the position that they sit in just now. Mm. But you obviously would have taken on this position if you didn't think against St Man. No, 100%. And, and again, I'll go back to this, the players were told that... Uh, it, I always want to follow my own sword, so whatever I ask them to do on Wednesday is my choice, it's my decision, it's what I want to do. Um, I, I only ask them to follow it, and, and if that doesn't work on Wednesday night, I'll take responsibility for it. I'm not I'm not looking for anybody else to shield me for any blame or whatever, um, because that's how I've always worked. That's what I was as a player. I was the first guy to hold my hands up when I made a mistake, and I also think I've done that previously as a manager as well. Maybe leave you open to be shot at, but again, I'm absolutely fine with that. It's not a problem. I think I heard you on the radio the other day saying you're up at three in the morning. Is it something that's on your mind? Yeah, yeah. Uh, an, an overthinker, I think, would be the best way of putting it. Not apprehension, no, not anxious, just want to think about trying to make the right decisions come Wednesday um, and try to do that as quick as I possibly can. Again, in my head, I like to set up a team if we're playing Wednesday night. I want to make sure everybody knows who's playing today. Um, I want to make sure that by the time they leave the football club, they know what's expected of them. And this period of time until Wednesday, now for me should be all the work's done and, and I can almost relax and start to think about having a calm head when the big decisions have to come on Wednesday and that's how I'm trying to operate. You touched upon St Man there, but what sort of game are you expecting? Really difficult, really difficult. They they make you earn everything that you get out of the game. Um, they make you defend. They make you defend from wide areas. They make you defend your penalty box. Um, I think that they operate with a real energy, with a real aggression. Stevie's a guy that I, I respect. When I first came into management, it felt that I played a, a few games against him, um, sat and had a few good conversations with him um, in a manager's office afterwards, which I took loads from. I took an awful lot from. There's quite clearly a connection with this football club as well. With both clubs, with players that have went the opposite direction, all that sort of stuff, that's another narrative, I suppose, that, that you could speak about. But in terms of what Stephen does as a manager, I, I'm exceptionally complimentary. I, I, I really respect what he's done. I look at what he's done here when he set up a team to go into two cup finals, um, played a 3 5 2 a little bit similar to what you see just now in St Mirren, and that was our foundation for a bit of success in that period got everything out of the players, got absolutely everything out of the players, were very difficult to play against whatever week they played or whoever they played um, and I can see him doing a very similar thing at St Mirren. I know that he tried to evolve and add layers onto that here and and I get that but I think fundament fundamentally just now he's just trying to make them a, a really difficult team to play against and it's working. Could you just give us some squad news as everyone... Yeah, no no real changes to the squads. I say I face a similar situation to what Stevie had at the weekend. Um, there's guys that are starting to get back on the pitch and, and, and running, but we've almost got a, a squad of players still, as I say, up in that up in that medical room. I'm hopeful that in, in time, weeks or whatever, in, in days that we'll start to get some a wee bit closer to the first team for however that looks, for whoever it is. But as it stands just now, we'll be a similar group of players to what played on Saturday. Can I just ask you a quick question regarding the overall situation? I think some supporters are slightly concerned. They've seen the chief exec moving on. They've seen a third different man leave the team. It could be a fourth by the end of the season. There's a feeling that maybe the club is 
is in a bit of a spiral overall. What would you say to allay those those things? Again, pe- people are going to have opinions, Mark. It's it, it's very easy to to have that opinion. Understand that that maybe carries a wee bit more weight when you're struggling as a team and you're not and you're not doing well. It's not really something I've I've thought about too much. It's not my responsibility to think about what's happening behind the scenes. We are a little bit short in terms of staff because Brian and Stephen have left, which leaves us easily two members of staff down. You know, it was a small group of staff anyway behind the scenes. So it, it's been difficult. You've got two full-time football coaches, if you like, and myself and David Clarkson trying to run a first team uh, reserves, an 18s and an academy because remember, that all, that all continues. That doesn't stop. Um, so from my point of view, I've had to ask a number of guys, some of them uh, standing behind you, to really rally and get behind us and do a little bit extra to see if we can uh, we can try and steady the ship a little bit. And I think that will give us a foundation as a football club to maybe put those pieces in place that can create a structure that's hopefully going to be long term. Stuart, you've been our top flight manager before, and I'm sure that's a place you'd like to get back to. Even if this just is one game, is this a chance for you to maybe prove yourself? No, nah, I don't think I need to prove anything, to be honest with you. Um, and again, I'm sorry, I don't want to sound arrogant. You know, <laughs> I've won a championship in the first time I asked in a Challenge Cup. We won two trophies in the same year. Kept a club in the in the Premiership during the pandemic. Um, all whilst saving a football club millions of pounds. Um, and I need to mention that as well. Sometimes I feel that that goes a little bit unnoticed. Maybe not had a platform to say that sometimes. But when you look at it, my job and my remit was to bring in players, improve them, sell them, reduce a budget right across the board from what it ever was. So I think in probably the parameters that I was working at, I think there was a, a large degree of success. To say the bit that I'm immensely proud of is, is some of the development aspects, you know, we an, an under 20s team uh, with, with guys that were sold and we're looking at guys like Ross Stewart and all these boys, but that was my remit to bring money back into a football club and dra- dra- uh, drastically cut a budget. So I don't think I need to prove anything to anybody. Um, and please, I hope that doesn't sound arrogant. I just feel that that is the facts. And sometimes people maybe look beyond that.